young people giving adults advice with Leonie Tillman. In this episode, Marcel, 16, Summer, 13, and Alea, 9, who are sisters, they start talking quite quickly about the pressures of growing up and looking to the future and the pressures and responsibilities that adults are under. Equally, they have a sense that maybe adults are taking things a bit too seriously. And I guess there's the balance between those two things. And I'll let Marcel take it from here. So um, I think having your own place, buying a house, um, having to pay bills and live independently, um, yeah, having a job and trying to, you know, have have your job and still do everything that you're supposed to do at home and all your home responsibilities. And just, yeah, there are lots of different adult responsibilities like that, I guess. And Summer, what about you? Oh, pretty much the same thing, you know, having to live independently and care for, you know, like your partner, your kids and having to balance the money in your job and the bills and having you know, all these things that adults do Mm. in the house. Yeah. So how do all of you know about these responsibilities? I think hearing things in media a lot as well, talking about um, young people breaking through in the housing market, especially in Sydney, and just talking about like um, mental health and how um, I I think in recent years, uh, you know, mental health hasn't been, you know, becoming better. So I think, um, yeah, the media kind of portrays, uh, growing up and um, getting to that age kind of negatively or as if it's a really stressful experience and that really has an impact on how you kind of view view it because you just keep hearing all these things about how difficult it is, um, you know, where we live and where we are. So that kind of, yeah, makes you feel like it, it's going to be difficult. And do you have any ideas about how you might um, deal with that going forward? I mean, you know, you can hear about the concepts, but if you think, oh, that's going to be stressful, I'm just going to do it like this. Um, I don't, yeah, I don't really like to think about it just yet. I like to, I, I like to think of myself as just focusing on where, where I'm at right now and not really looking too far ahead. But yeah, to think in a couple of years, yeah, I don't know. I haven't really thought about, you know, methods or coping methods or anything like that. I'm just kind of focused on now at the moment. Yeah, that sounds sensible. <laughs> and Alea, what about you? Do you have some ideas about how you're going to manage these future stresses? Um, I'm, I'm not uh, exactly sure, but as Marcel said, um, I'm not really going to like think about it right now because it's a lot ahead kind of. Yeah. And I mean, you're nine. So I guess from an adult perspective, I know that I'd probably be saying just, just enjoy being nine. Do, do you get that message a lot? Yeah. <laughs> and what is it to be nine? What do you do with yourself? Um, well, for a start, you have lots and lots of free time and you can just normally do your work and there isn't any like competitions, any big things happening. And yeah. And so what do you do with all this spare time? I like just playing around and stuff like that, drawing, writing. Yeah, nice. And Summer, do you think that the stresses that your parents have now are different from their parents? Well, yeah, of course. It's all about, you know, the environment of where you grow up and how things are and the place you live and um, times change and technology comes in, makes it a lot easier for, you know, some things to be done. So of course, yeah, it would be different. Mm, Yeah. And you're being led by your parents predominantly and the teachers, but what do you really want from adults? What do you want from your parents or from your teachers to help you prepare for the future? Um, you know, for a start to understand our point of view and obviously our age and um, talk to us in a way that, you know, will understand what's going to happen in the future and kind of teach us a little bit about, you know, stresses and how to cope and kind of talk to us about how 
what they do to cope with their problems so we can kind of have an idea of what to do in that circumstance. Yeah, right. That sounds sensible. And Alea, what about you? Is there something you want from adults? Um, to be honest, really honest, I mostly want like a good idea of how everything works and some good advice. And Marcel, what about you? You're 16. Now you're starting to head towards adulthood. What do you want from adults? Um, yeah, really just practical, real life sort of advice and experiences, things that aren't really sugar coated. Because I think growing up, there's a very, like, it's a very unbalanced sort of um, side of things that you hear. So I think hearing things that are very, like, you know, some real life experiences, because, like, at the end of the day, like, you're, you're going to go through some tough times. So I think hearing about some practical, real life experiences and the way that you deal with those things. That's really helpful because, yeah, it's better. It's better to know. It's better to hear it straight. Mm, yeah, definitely. And so, what? What about? What are you looking forward to about growing up? As we've sort of spoken a lot about the stresses and the maybe things that aren't so pleasant. But what are you looking forward to? Maybe Alea first. Something that you think, oh, I can't do that now because I'm nine. But when I'm twenty-five, might be different. Um, yeah, I actually want to be a soccer player, have a um, good career, be an athlete and stuff. Cool. <laughs> yes. <laughs> cool. And um, Marcel, what about you? What are you looking forward to? Um, I'm, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm excited. Like I know there are all these things about the stresses and stuff, but there's definitely, it's definitely not all stressful and not all bad. So um, yeah, I'm looking forward to um you know, being more independent and um, doing exciting new things that I guess you can't do now with school and stuff. So, yeah, doing more of what you want to do, like going to university and doing exactly what you want to do and then letting it take you to a career, which is what you want to do. I think that's not really like an option that you have at this age. So, yeah, the in, being independent and, yeah, doing like exactly what you want to do. And so what do you really want to do? Which direction will you head in? Um, I want to go to university, but I'm not quite sure what to do yet. I'm thinking something around communications and media. That really, yeah, I really like that stuff. So, yeah. Do you have much to do with your dad's business? Uh, not really much to I, I know all about what he's doing and we, we talk about it and stuff. But, yeah, I, I'd like to uh, do stuff with my dad's business. That would be fun. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, I used to work with my father for many years. It's um. It's amazing. I think we are sometimes scared to work work with our family because it can be too close for comfort, but I always got on really well with my dad when I worked with him. So I can only advise you to go there if he wants you to. <laughs> oh, I think and, he does. Yeah, he yeah I bet he would. Yeah, nice. And Summer, what about you? What are you looking forward to? Well, to be honest, I'm not really sure about what I want to do in the future. Um, of course, I want to go to university and just do something that I actually enjoy and look forward to, you know, spending my time doing. Like there's no point in waking up and knowing that you're just going to do something boring for the rest of your life, you know. Yeah. What what does seem interesting to you at the moment? Like if I had to throw you into a job today, what do you think it would be? Um, I actually don't know. Something, you know, that involves lots of like socializing and talking to other people and finding out about other people's lives and stuff. That'd be really cool. So we've got a family of communicators, it seems. <laughs> yes. And so Alea, if I threw you into a job today to be a football star, let's say. I would actually like that because, you know, your kids as a dream is, um, your dream as a um, kid is always probably, where you want to go in your heart and stuff. And you may want to do other things when you're older, but like you'll always still have that good passion for something. Yeah. Nice. And Summer, what, what is important to think about when you're choosing a job? Well, when you're choosing a job, it's really important to think about, is this the right job for you? Like, Will you enjoy doing it? Are you good at doing it? You know, is it the best possible option that will suit you and your personality and all of your talents? Yeah. And Marcel, do you think that 
is there some pressure to to choose the one thing that you're good at or do you feel like there's plenty of room for just playing around with different jobs or do you feel like there's a lot of pressure to choose the right thing I think there is I think there is a lot of pressure but I think recently uh well I heard recently a statistic that um people my age will have uh, around like seven different careers or like a crazy number like that in their life like seven different completely different types of job pathways so I think even though there is pressure, I think at this age there's pressure to know what you want to do, to already like have this idea of what you want to do after high school. I think there's definitely room for doing so- doing something and changing your mind. And I think a lot of people change their mind and there's nothing wrong with that. But, yeah, it's important to yeah do not only do something that you enjoy but something that you're like the best version of yourself. And it's also really important to give back. And I think when like looking for – for me, something that will be important when I'm thinking about the job that I want to do for the rest of my life or one seventh of my life, I will not only think about something that I enjoy and that I'm good at, but something where I can actually give back to my community. Yeah. Yeah. I hear that a lot. It's a really, what, what is it about wanting to give back to the community? Why is that so uh, I think, important? I think it's really rewarding and I think it's not just rewarding, but I think it, it just keeps everything flowing like a cycle. I just think that, um, you know, if people, if, if everyone gives back to the community, like just things just start flourishing and growing and, and people are all helping each other and there's just a whole different attitude to, to life. So I think that it's, it's really rewarding, but it's not just rewarding for yourself. It's, it's rewarding for the people that you're helping. Yeah, lovely. And um, Summer, what do you think about that idea that you might have seven careers across your life? Well, you know, everyone's different, but it's um, uh, it's just crazy to hear that seven different job career paths is. But I mean, even after hearing that, there's always time to experiment, and you know, there's always another option out there if you're not happy or just looking to try something new it's always a good choice to you know kind of explore other ideas out there for you and other jobs yeah and just to like jump in but I just thought of like the B movie where um Barry Benson is like not happy that you have the same job for the rest of your life so I think people have really different reactions to maybe statistic like the one I said of, of having so many different um, jobs. I think some people would like to have one job that's sort of set in stone for the rest of their life, just something they're good at and they enjoy and just keep it at that. Whereas some people, like in the B movie, would just be terrified to hear that they're stuck in one thing. So I think it's just the way that you react to change and doing different things really influences like, um, yeah, how you feel about that. Yeah, I know. It's that that idea to adapt and change to a different thing. I mean, that's a skill in itself, right? I don't know. Yeah. It, in some ways it feels like it, it can alleviate, it can make the pressure less if you know that you're going to change careers seven times. But yeah, then you need that resilience to be able to change. That's, yeah, it's a bit of a double-edged sword, I guess. Yeah. Um, just in terms of like thinking around w- about success, I, I just wondered if any of you had ever won an award for anything. Yeah. yeah. Alea, what about you? Have you ever won an award? Um, yeah, um, at the end of last year, we had a big assembly and there were three people chosen, um, out of my class and, uh, I was actually one of them and I stood up in front of like most of the school, which was, uh, very good and it felt nice that I was achieving lots of different things. That's great. And what, why did they pick you? What was, uh, what were the qualities that, um, they chose you for? I think I was um, chosen for being like a good learner and I kept on persisting and stuff and that I was good like at sport and different activities. Yeah, that's super cool. And Summer, what about you? Have you won any awards? Well, over time, yeah, I have, but in different subjects, like I've got some in English, some in math. I've got some in sports as well. And it just feels really good to know that you're actually excelling in something you love to do. Yeah, it's a pretty nice feeling, isn't it? And and Marcel, what about you? 
Yeah, I've, yeah, I've got awards for lots of different things as well. What's the one you're most proud of? Do you think? Um, I'm uh, I'm pretty proud of all of them. I think um maybe my bronze Duke event. I think that's something that everyone's pretty proud of because so much work goes into it, and then you just yeah, it's really rewarding. It's a, like a rewarding experience. Do you think the more effort you have to put into something? And then if you get recognized for it, it just feels like it's an even bigger achievement. Oh yeah, definitely. Like it's, it's a total different feeling getting a participation award and getting like an award for something that you put a lot of effort into and, you know, you feel like you've been recognized and all those hard works and efforts have been uh, rewarded and that's a really good feeling. Yeah. Nice. Well, congratulations. I've, I've never achieved that. So I'm, I'm impressed. Oh, thank you. Um, what about, have you ever failed? Tell me about a time that you failed. I haven't like, you know, got a fail mark, like an actual like fail, mm. but I remember a couple of years back that I just remember I just did not do well in like, a little pretest that we did. And it just, it didn't feel too good because to know that you've like you think that you're good at it and you see the test and you just don't get a good mark but then I guess it pushes you to try harder in the future and study a bit more so it's the failures that actually help me the most yeah I think we don't like to acknowledge that though do we I think everyone likes to avoid it yeah and Marcel, what about you? Do you feel there's a time, even if it's not an exam or anything that gets a mark, but a time that you felt you failed? Um, yeah, I think as you grow up, you, you do you do lots of new things and different things and you try lots of new things. And then I think you you um, maybe not regret your, your new experiences, but I think you sort of feel like you fail sometimes when yeah not just at school but like just things outside of school like maybe you know when you're learning about um friendship groups and and having different friendships and then you know something goes wrong in the friendship that can really make you feel like you failed with that like socially so yeah yeah social failure that's interesting because there's no measure or mark is there but you definitely know when you've flunked out (laughs) yeah yeah it's just about I think you just know when you failed I think like you just know how you feel I think that that's something, well, I know I don't have any idea about because there were no, there was no social media around when I was at school. Is that something that, that is a little bit scary for you guys at school? Uh, Socially speaking? Yeah. Yeah. There there are lots of expectations and there are lots of um, stereotypes and and all these expectations and it makes you feel like you have to always um, be living up to those expectations and to be just doing kind of what everyone else is doing and it can, it can become tiring. And I think when you don't do it and when people notice you falter, then you, I guess you failed. But uh, to me, that's not failing. Like, I think that's just, that's just not following what everyone else is doing. Summer, do you agree with that? Yeah, of course. There's so many different expectations that, you know, when you just like don't follow them and you just out of the crowd, it's, so much more peaceful but of course there are still other people who are just always going to recognize that you're just not living up to those expectations you know and how do you deal with that when somebody comments on on it can I mean maybe even give me an example because I can't even imagine what it would be like there are, there are lots of different ways for that to happen on social media to be like excluded but like without it being directly like you can be removed from stories you can be um, added to small stories and then be removed or you can be um you can be tagged in things you can you can have like group chats made and you not being in the group chats there, there there are lots of indirect ways to exclude people on social media wow yeah it's kind of like having a party and not inviting somebody but 10 times a day yeah <laughs> that does sound yeah. stressful <laughs> and Aaliyah what about you and social media how does that affect you well, uh, I haven't really been exposed to that much social media yet, but from actual physical talking and conversations, many people don't actually go direct to you. They can they have lots of different examples of like kind of like leaving you out, but they can sometimes you won't notice. And sometimes you will notice that they're trying to, like, get you out and trying to say no to you and stuff like that. 
And so this, this whole idea of success and failure, whether it's your own feeling about it or, or real success or uh, money success or exam success, how do you think you can make your life successful? I mean, to me, your life would be successful when you, you know, you're doing something you love, you know, you're happy with where you are and who you're with and what you're doing every day. It's just, to me, just really loving the life you're living. It's just, that's when you're at the success point, you know? Yeah. Marcel, what do you think? Um, I think, yeah, I, I agree and I disagree with someone because I think that you'll, then there won't be a point where you'll ever truly be satisfied. I think that's a really difficult place to get to. So I think being content with like everything the way it is and just, going with that, going with the flow and yeah, just finding, finding ways to be happy no matter what. And I think, yeah, being su- successful is really just being content with the way everything is. Yeah. And, and Marcel, if you're content with everything and you feel like you're proud of what you're doing, if someone comes in then as an adult and says to you that they don't like what you're doing, do you think it will have an effect or do you think you'll be able to slide through it easier? I mean, if you think you're doing the right thing and by your by your own standards and values, you are doing the right thing and you're not really doing anything that's like ethically wrong, then I don't think it would affect me because I think adults, um, um, as we said before, like times change and they've grown up in different times and I'm sure success means different things to um, my parents and my grandparents than it will mean to me and my children and grandchildren later down the track. So I think if someone if I was content with everything in my life and feeling like I've been successful and I'm happy with the way things are and someone told me that they didn't like what I was doing, I think it's just subjective. It's just their opinion because, yeah, I feel like it's, yeah, it's different to everyone. Yeah. Alea, does that make sense to you as well? Do you think that if you're confident in yourself and if someone criticizes you that it doesn't matter as much? In, in a way, I guess I'm asking does it does it matter about how you feel about yourself? Well, yeah, it kind of does because if you think you're doing bad, you're probably doing bad and you'll feel a bit guilty about yourself and you might have regrets. But it's not really about what other people think about you and if they're trying to criticize you because they're, they're kind of not like the judge of your life, the whole person who marks you and stuff. And... Yeah, you can follow your own pace, your own different track and stuff like that, yeah. Yeah, nice. And so in terms of success, I mean, a lot of people measure it by money. So what do you think about money and earning money and how important is it? It's pretty important because you don't want to, like, end up begging and stuff like that. Um, Well, um. It's good to not, like, try and be the richest person on earth, but you can get your own money by doing your own thing and no competition on money because, you know, it's important and, yeah. And, Summer, how important do you think money is now and in the future? Well, of course, money plays a big role in everyone's lives and you need it for your necessities and of course, to buy everything you need, but I don't think money should be the number one thing in your life, like the one thing you just revolve around because when it gets to that point, you know, you just do anything for money and it's you just need to find that balance between living your life and having your money and knowing when to spend and when to save because you can't be too money obsessed, you know. And Alea, coming back to you, what if I gave you a million dollars today? What would you do with it? Um, I would actually help people because I don't have a use as a nine-year-old for all of that money. I don't really have bills to pay and everything, but I would just help other people who can't do all those things that I can and stuff and who can't get their necessities and things they need. Yeah, lovely. And Marcel, if I gave you a million dollars today, what would you do? Um, I would I would hold on to the million dollars until I figure out how I can put the money to good use to help other people. But 
at the same time, I wouldn't spend all of it on helping other people. I would leave a little bit for myself, my family, um, my family overseas and um, for my own future. And, yeah, but I'd really just sit on it until I figured out like a really effective way to help lots of people with that money. And, and Summer, what about you? How would you, how would you get rid of that million? Well, of course I would give some of it to my family and, yeah, my family overseas and hopefully get them to come over for a while and have a visit. I would put some aside for my future and, you know, savings that I'll need and the rest I'll, you know, I'll help a few people. Yeah. And why do you think some adults find it so difficult to manage their money these days? It can be hard to find a balance between life and, like, money, but um, it usually just comes down to all of the things that they need to pay and all of the things they need to buy. Yeah, Leah, what do you think? Why do you think adults, some adults find it really difficult? Um, I think they find it um, difficult because lots of them have to care for other people. They have to be there for other people and, you know, care and help and they have to treat other people and they also have to pay bills and stuff for themselves and then stuff for their kids. And, you know, they can't really put that on top of the bucket list and it gets mixed up kind of. Yeah. And Marcel, you're getting closer to earning your own money, I imagine. So can you even imagine that it would be difficult to manage money in the future? Um, well, I think, uh, I don't know. I think I'm going to be cocky and say I'm pretty good at handling my money. I've been working since, um, I was 14 doing umpiring for netball. And then when I was 15, I got a job at our local toy shop at the shopping center. So I've been earning money for a bit now, obviously not like a crazy amount of money, but, um, I think I'm pretty good with it. And I think it comes down to, um, prioritizing what, what the money should go towards. So I think um, a lot of adults probably struggle. I mean, yeah, the cost of living is pretty expensive, but I think a lot of adults also struggle with um, spending money for the right things. So I think that um, if you if you know how to prioritise and budget and I think those skills are really important, then I think you'll be fine. So how did you learn that? I think I, I really learned it from my mom. My mom's really good with, like, handling money and stuff and she's always taught us about saving and um handling our money in a good way and uh, yeah at the same time I took commerce as an elective and um in year nine there was a big focus on um budgeting and we we had to make this big budget and you know put money aside and I think it really showed me like where your money goes and how easily it is to um spend money on on leisure and not on the things you need and how important saving is and how quick savings can grow so I think yeah, learning about it at school, but also learning at home how important it is to um, have like a rainy day fund and have savings and not to just spend money straight away so quickly on things you don't need. Yeah, that really helped me. Yeah, that's really interesting. I think the education of money is is something that was really lacking from um, me growing up at school. I don't remember that ever being a subject. I know I probably learned it from my father and that's yeah it's so important to learn and I wondered if they taught it at school yeah no it's still, you know, I, I would still argue that it's not really being taught at school and I think unless you choose um an elective like commerce in year nine and ten which again is optional I think um when I think of all the things I've learned in year nine and ten in commerce and the people that haven't done it I just think like wow I've learned so many things and they're just really lacking all of those all of those important things that I've learned, like really important things about taxes and super and um, saving, budgeting. So I think it, it should be, I think a subject like commerce should actually be compulsory. Yeah, I agree. Summer, what about you? Will you, are you? What year are you in at the moment? I'm in year eight currently. So will you choose that as an elective? Well, after hearing all of the things that, you know, other people haven't learned about money, of course I'm going to consider it because you know, I wouldn't want to be that person who just doesn't know what to do with the money and doesn't know how the systems work. And yeah, I really would take that into consideration. And so Alea, who do you look up to most today? Um, 
Well, mostly um, I look up to my sisters and my mum because I think they're really good at handling things, um, especially um, Summer because she she's she shares my room. She knows, like, because she's done everything that I've done since Mattel's um, a bit older than me. Um, she kind of had different experiences, but I feel like... Um, Summer... I feel like um, I really look up to my sisters and uh, my mum because they're all really good at doing different things and, yeah. What's something that Summer has taught you that you thought, wow, I'm so glad she taught me that? Um, Oh, a lot of things. Um, Definitely math. When I um, failed one of my things, I didn't get, get it. And... Yeah, she teaches me different methods of not only learning but well-being too. One thing that stands out for me was how to deal with different issues and if you're facing something that you don't really like, then how to, you know, stand up to it and, yeah, that. Yeah, nice. And Summer, what about you? Who do you look up to? Well, of course I look up to my family, my parents, my sisters I mostly look up to my sisters and it's just so fun to like hear the different perspectives like of course my older sister she can tell me you know things that happen around with her and her life but my younger sister it's also fun when I explain the problems to her I also love seeing her side of things it's usually fun and it's just so easy and simple it just sounds so like playful you know I can't really explain. Do you think we overcomplicate things? <laughs> yeah, of course. And that's why, you know, adults need advice from the kids, just like, you know, the podcast that you're doing right now. Yeah. Do you see Do you see adults doing that consistently? Yeah, of course, all the time. They overcomplicate things that don't even need to be overcomplicated. They're simple solutions to a lot of things. Of course, like how to deal with problems in like, you know, the playground, like the school problems and things they overcomplicated a little bit too much but I mean that's what they do do you think they're overcomplicating your problems um sometimes yeah depends on what the problem is but sometimes they do overcomplicate little problems that I have yeah yeah and Marcel what about you who do you look up to most whether it's someone in your family or even beyond in you know a famous person or something like that um yeah I just look up to my parents really yeah really really cliche but I just look up to my parents I think um going like outside of that um yeah I don't really know I think yeah just generally I just look up to my parents so what's um, what's the most important thing that your parents have taught you would you say um being resilient I think um yeah bouncing back being very resilient and um that change is good adapting to change Um, And I think that's really important, learning how to deal with change and learning how to uh, look at change. They've really taught me that. And I think that you can just do anything. Yeah, that's a really cliche one. But, yeah, that you can literally do whatever you want and there's nothing stopping you. Yeah, sky's the limit. Can I ask you what the secret advice is to being resilient? How did they tell you to do that? Um, I think it wasn't something they really told me directly, but I think from their own experiences, yeah, I think that really came through as, as that they were that they're both really resilient people and even though they've had a very different childhood to a lot of people, that um, they've been really resilient and there's no reason why anyone else couldn't or shouldn't be resilient. And why were their lives uh, so different to other children? Um, well, both of our parents are refugees, well, were refugees, so they came to Australia uh from a country that was really torn apart by war and still is. So I think, yeah, they, they've had to um, live in different countries, wait for citizenship, um, come to a completely new country where they didn't speak the language, start basically from scratch. Um, yeah, basically just start a new life in a completely different country, which for me is really unimaginable. I could, I could never see myself doing that. So I think, yeah, doing that but still managing to – um, work so hard and, and be so resilient and be so positive. That's really, really had a large impact on my life. 
I could imagine. I mean, that's the the clincher, isn't it? I mean, we grew up, I mean, I grew up in Australia with very privileged environment. Everything was easy. And I can only imagine that if I know the story of my parents were so difficult that it would really make me appreciate being strong in a different way. Yeah, no, we, we've we've had this yeah, same ex- same experience as you. We've we've grown up, you know, very privileged and with nothing really, nothing that even compares to what they've been through. So hearing um, what they've been through and just knowing that they they dealt with everything so well and they um they've grown from that and they're where they're at today. That's really inspiring for us. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think you just sort of get over things because you get yeah, it wasn't that hard, was it? <laughs> yeah. 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 Exactly. <laughs> And so I'm just coming to the final couple of questions that I'd love to hear what each of you think. What's one piece of advice you want to give adults? One piece of advice is probably the most relevant one, the necessary to right now, is, you know, don't get too stressed, don't get overwhelmed for the little things and everything is just normal and it'll go back to normal if you just do little solutions and it'll go just normal and everything will be fine. Yeah, nice one. Summer, what about you? I mean, as simple as it sounds, um, the one piece of key advice I would give to adults is to just listen because from my experience, I've just seen that adults, they just, some of them, not all of them, of course, they just, stubborn and always think that you know their point of view is the best so maybe just you know listen have a little think about what other people uh, other ages like our age would do and you know hear our side of the story it would just be really cool to you know give them advice on their adult situations yeah nice and Marcel what advice do you want to give adults um, yeah, not to be close minded to always be open minded about everything, but also to that it's okay to not always feel happy and satisfied and content, and it's okay that there are always there are always you know negative things that happen around us, and we shouldn't let them get to us too much and I think yeah, I think adults really uh, stress a lot, and it's not like there's no reason to stress, but I think stressing is never gonna help you, worrying is never gonna help you, it's just gonna you know make it a bigger problem than it really is. So, yeah, to adults, I would just say to um, think with an open mind to be positive and uh, everything's going to be okay and you've made it this far so you can keep going and you'll be fine. Very cool. I like it. And my last question is what would you do if you were leading the world today? I think if I was leading the whole world, I would make good rights, human rights, children child rights and i would stop like world war and i would make sure like everyone feels good everyone feels fine and that you make sure that everyone's like supported and everyone's happy with who they are where they are and yeah it's a big responsibility huh Mm -hmm. summer what would you do if you were leading the world I would just, to be simple, I'd just be fair. Like, to me, being fair is just, it'll just solve everything. Because if you're fair, then everyone will just get along and everyone will have the equal rights and equal responsibilities. Of course, you can't always stop the bad things from happening. Like, of course, bad things are just going to happen. But if you was, like, supportive of everyone, gave everyone equal rights and Made, made sure everything was fair between each other, then I just think every the world would just be a better place. Mm. Marcel, do you think the world is fair? Uh, no, I don't think the world is fair, but I don't think life is fair and I think it's very difficult to um, have fairness, um, especially at like a world universal level. Um, I think if I was leading, leading the world, wow, what a responsibility. I think I would... Um, I would just, yeah, like I'd like everything to be as equal as it can be, but I'd also not have the expectation that things will be equal because, um, I would just, I would just try to make everyone, I don't really know, to be honest, I think education is really important. So I think maybe, um, 
making education accessible to everyone in the world would actually solve a lot more problems. And yeah, I don't know if I'd want to be the leader of the whole world because I think that it's really easy to become corrupted when you're given so much power. And I would, I just think that anyone in a, such a high position with so much power can easily, um, you know, just get all these bad, you know, in, intentions. That's so, really yeah. interesting. So do you think that if you were in, in that high position that even you would be tempted? Uh, yeah, definitely. I don't think it's, um, yeah, I don't think it's just a few people. I think anyone with that gets given a lot of power could easily become corrupted by all the power. And I think I'm just learning stuff like about that at school, like about Macbeth and, um, yeah, just I think ultimate power can really be really destructive. So I think being a leader of the world would not not be a good idea. Yeah, it's an interesting one, isn't it? I mean, it's 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 hard to imagine that we would ever do anything heinous, but it's kind of yeah, human nature. It's it's a weird one. Yeah, keep it, is. Keep it in check, guys. <laughs> yeah. That's great, guys. I, I love what you had to say. Thanks so much, oh, thank and you. especially that you've given up your afternoon to chat to me. So I really appreciate it. Thank you for having us. Hopefully we'll meet one day. Yes, hopefully. (laughs) Okay, talk to you later. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. If you want to find all the others, just go to your favorite platform, Young People Giving Adults Advice, and hit follow because we'll be releasing a new episode each Wednesday. Thanks so much for your support. podcast has been made possible with the help of March Made Media and Leonie Tillman at English for Business.